Landed property versus high-rise buildings, which is better? Hello everyone, welcome back to Good Feng Shui Good Life. Now there's a saying in Chinese that if you marry the right husband or wife, a rich husband or wife that is, you can save yourself 10 years of hard work. Now have you ever thought that if you pick a house with good feng shui, it can save you up to 20 years of hard work? Today we are talking about the effects of feng shui between a landed versus a high-rise unit. Traditionally, feng shui is a study of relationship between human and land. Now look at this chart. Think of it as the holy trinity of feng shui. Tian Di Ren. The chart contains the heaven, Tian, earth, Di, and human, Ren. If you, human, are at the right place, earth, at the right time, heaven, then you will prosper. Now this is the simplest way of explaining what is feng shui. Alright, now back to the main topic of the video. Traditionally, people have been living on the ground. People are in contact with earth. Thus, the effect of the earth qi, di yun, which changes every 20 years, will be much more apparent. It is only about 150 years ago that people started building high-rise buildings and started living higher and higher off the ground. If you live in a high-rise building, even a unit with good feng shui, the element of earth in the Holy Trinity is going to be much weaker because we are not physically in contact with earth. Make sense? However, there's one big but. This concept works both ways. A landed unit with good feng shui will give us a big and more direct positive effect. A landed unit with bad feng shui also has a bigger and more direct negative impact to its inhabitants. If you live in places with land constraints, such as Singapore or Hong Kong, you don't really have a choice. But if you're from North America or Malaysia like me, pick a landed unit with good feng shui if you can. Like, share and subscribe.